What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So the day has finally come and it is time to rebuild my STI six speed gearbox. I've been waiting for some parts from IEG. They finally arrived several days ago and uh, I've just been procrastinating because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but uh, we'll figure it out. You know, I'm not necessarily starting from zero experience. Uh, I have rebuilt a five speed before um, successfully and uh, that gearbox is still in a friend's car. I think it's still running to my knowledge. Not my first gearbox I've rebuilt, but definitely my first six speed. And what we're gonna be doing is replacing the synchros with some IAG carbon synchros. I have those sitting right here in this box. So this is first through sixth. I don't think we'll be doing first. Pulling this assembly off uh, is a lot more challenging than I had anticipated. There's just not a lot here to grab onto as far as the teeth on this gear go. And so I do not wanna damage it. And because it's first gear, I think I'm okay with it. All the videos that I've seen of people doing this and the write-ups and stuff, it seems like most people do not do this one. I could be wrong, maybe I'll regret it later, but there's only one way to find out. I'm also going to be using this as a lubricant uh, just to assemble this stuff. This is not the gear oil that I will be uh, filling the gearbox with before driving. Um, I think I'm gonna use a high quality Redline product. Not that Motul isn't high quality, it's just that the Redline cocktail from Baderbilt seems to be a really good solution for these gearboxes. So this is just like a lubricant to install it. So I have gone through and cleaned all of these parts really well and then obviously was pretty meticulous about it. Uh, as far as keeping them clean when they've been sitting on the shelf because I've just wrapped them all up just some saran wrap I had around the house to keep all of the dust and dirt and debris off of these things. I'm just giving it another quick wipe down before we get started here. Let's bearing a quick wipe down as well. All right guys, so I'm gonna be starting with the output shaft gears here. I already have this second gear pulled off and we'll be installing the second gear synchro. This is the OEM stock synchro. So you have this inner ring and then the steel friction ring in the center and then the outer ring. Looks like the first gear synchro that's already on there and this one are the same size. And the other thing that I'm noticing about these is that there's these little hash marks right here on these fins that stick out on the um, friction ring. And this one, this one's lacking those little grooves. It would be cool to pull those apart and do it, but man, I'm just worried about damaging the gears. And because it's first gear, like, you know, if, if this transmission didn't feel bad going into first at all. So I'm not that worried about it, but I don't know, I'll hold on to it. Maybe in the future, if you have to tear this thing down from like a, a busted gear or something, I could do it then. Now the selector ring here has these little, um, I don't know what you call these, these little pins or springs. And if you look at this, there's this gap right here, right there, right there where my finger is. The gap in between is a little bit wider than the rest of them. And as you go around, you'll notice that there's only three of them and they're evenly spaced apart. I know because I actually counted. And that is where these go. So you wanna make sure you don't lose these. If they fall out, it's easy to start panicking and being like, shit, I don't know how to get it back together. I'm not gonna know, but you will. If you just look at it, stare at it long enough, the answer reveals itself. Other thing about this is that it has a groove down here and it's beveled on the bottom. That goes down. So that is something that you definitely don't wanna mess up. Kind of dab some on my finger here. Just kind of spread it around. I just put these little springs halfway. So when you set this on here, those go right in the little gaps right here so they can rest on that bottom first gear synchro. Just like that, that's what we want. It goes on there like this, and you have these tabs, one, two, three. They'll sit right down in the same spots on that selector ring on the other side of it. Now I'm gonna grab our little needle bearing out of here. This is second gear. And from what I can tell, this needle bearing is symmetrical. So it shouldn't matter which direction. And that slides down right over this piece right there. 
Now we have second gear here. Right, right there, right there. There's six of them that go around. Those slot right into these little locating slots on the gear itself. Just kind of wipe it off again. Slide her down. The pairing. Rotate it and then it clicks into place. Now in theory, if we kind of hold this on, um, we should be able to move our yeah. All right guys, so next up I have these little Woodruff keys and these slot right in here. Now let's just get a little more gear oil in here. Mix it around, I'm making a mess while I do it. Same thing with fifth and sixth here. And then we should be able to start pressing this. I have a feeling this one is gonna be more straightforward than the input gears, but we'll see. Slide it on. Got it all set up. So let's go ahead and give it a go. got it. I mean, I have like a lot of resistance on this now and I shine my light through here between the gears and it looks to be mated right where it needs to be. And we can still turn these and I can still engage them. So I think we're good. All right. Now that those gears are pressed on that output shaft, Let's just get our bearing on. This is the only other piece. I'm just gonna put some lube on this thing. Just kind of spin it around. I think I'm going to use this old bearing and just kind of stack it. And then use the Company 23 tool to press. This thing almost got stuck. I was a little worried. Um, thankfully it didn't though. I was able to get it off. <laughs> it's really weird. It doesn't look tapered, but somehow it like, got stuck on like the top thread just a little bit. And um, you can kind of see in there. It's really odd because I can put it right over the threads on that shaft and there's like a little bit of play. But somehow when I pressed those uh, gears on, it was pretty hard to pull the damn thing off. I had to tap it with the sledgehammer. I'm gonna use this as kind of an extra spacer so this doesn't actually like sink down over the shaft as far. Sure. Yeah, see, it fits over in there fine. Like, look at all that play. And the threads, I mean, they are a little wider, but like not that much. Check this out. Really odd. In any case, let's press the sparing on. good on this one. All right, now I'm gonna set this aside with the nut here, take this back to the shop as soon as we get the other gears pressed onto the input shaft and uh, we'll have them <coughs> tighten that down to its proper torque spec. So like I said, I don't have the proper device to clamp this thing to torque this down to the 400 plus foot pounds that it goes to. So. I don't want to mess it up at this stage. Um, so I'd rather just have them do it. All right, it is now input shaft time. 
This is a brand new blanket too, by the way. Just went and grabbed one from Harbor Freight just so we had a nice clean padded surface. All right guys, so on to the input gears. Uh, I set this up. This is just seated down on this old bearing just to kind of hold it in place. And then we're gonna start stacking some of the gears on it. Hold out a bunch of the input gears here. This is our roller bearing that's going on next. And then this will slide right over the top. All right, so you already know the drill. On this one. Make sure there's no crap on the surface or the surface. I've already cleaned the whole thing really well, but I just want to make sure. So this will go like this. And then this will slide over the top, perhaps. Yep. Grab our synchro. This is the old one. All right, so you guys can kind of see what's going on here. Let's set these one by one. We got the inner ring here, the middle ring, and then, of course, our outer ring here. Yeah, um, and then it aligns up onto the um, a spline. So I had to pull up Sam Pickering's video on rebuilding one of these six speeds again uh, for this next part because there were a couple things that I wasn't sure of. It's easy to lose track of this stuff and like it's, it's hard to know exactly which piece goes where. And I'm really glad that I pulled this up because there's a couple things that I want to show you that he uh, mentions on here and uh, we'll just get like a really close detailed look at it real quick before we start to press anything on there. So first of all, this is the selector sleeve. Like he mentions there's these grooves right here and these go down. And then if you look, there's a little paint mark right here. And then this piece is what slides in, the, in between there. And if you look, there's a shallow side and then a deep side. And the deep side also goes down. And if you look right there, that's where our little paint mark is that lines up with that one. He mentioned something about that's probably how it's like balanced or something. So yeah, definitely probably important to get that right. But this piece does need to get pressed on and it needs to get pressed on with this race right above it. Um, and another thing he mentioned is this little hole right here. That needs to be opposite the hole on the shaft. This is the hole that he's talking about. So when we go to press this on, if we know that that's right there, we just want it to be opposite on this side here so we can slide it down and kind of put it on like that and press it down with that piece for the selector sleeve. All right, so I'm gonna throw this on here. And then I have placed the hole directly at the back. So that way, I can just put this straight forward. So let me show you what we have going on here, guys. It took me like a good hour to find something that could work. It's an old gear, it's an old bearing race. The challenge was this piece, finding something that can sink all the way over and fit right on this ridge press that. So I have the gear puller pretty much with just like the slightest gap so it won't damage the splines hopefully. And this race with the gear on this guy. I don't know. Either this is gonna work really freaking well, or it's gonna be a terrible idea and I'm gonna regret it. Here we go. down and our little white dot. I got our little, whatever you call these, these little pins in their spots. 
like I showed you before, should in theory slide right in just like that. All right guys, so next is the roller bearing will slide over that race. This is fourth gear. This first. Seems to be in place. Put a little bit more gear oil in here. And that bearing. All right, holes at the back. And now this bushing. I guess that's what this is. This will go on next. <laughs> You know, you can't have too much lube on your shaft. Next up, we've got fifth gear. Throw that over. Barely see our little white paint mark. Um, I just want to align this so that this gap of the little selector basket will go slide right over that. Selector ring, just like last time. It's definitely getting easier as I go. I already got the little pins in place. Just like before, groove down, line up these white dots. And yeah, it slides right on. To our final new IAG synchro ring. And finally, sixth gear. We're gonna throw that on first. And then our needle bearing. The whole facing forward. And we're gonna press that on. All right guys, and now the last piece is our roller bearing here. It's a little three piece roller bearing. Uh, we're gonna press, the way that that guy Sam Pickering did it was he pressed uh, one of these on first alone, and then the race, which the groove goes up top, that's where the snap ring sits to hold it in the case in the proper position. So once you press this on, this will go on top like that. And then this will get pressed over the top. <laughs> like butter. It's just time to throw the washer on. All right guys, so washer's on. Nut is uh, just loosely in place. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna take this back to the driveline shop and they can torque this and the output shaft nut back down to the torque specs. And then I will catch back up with you guys and we'll be able to get this gearbox reassembled.